Hi folks. So this video is in response to a question that came up on the Moto user forums from a user named Kui who is asking about a previous video I posted a while back from 601 showing one of my characters that had a simple facial rig on it and blinks and he was wondering how I was doing the blinks using morphs and David Mass uh, reminded me recently that I'd promised to make a video about it a long time ago and I haven't so here you go David I'm I'm making good so this is a really simple technique uh, for using just a pair of morphs to simulate an arcing motion for something like in a facial rig where you'd want to blink so let's get to it now I've simplified things here so that we can illustrate what's happening and I've got uh, just this white um, circle to represent an eyeball and we're looking from a side view and then I've created this very simple uh, geometry to represent say an eyelid and, and normally this would be I guess the the back part of the eye would be in the head so presumably there'd be a face here and this is just the eyelid part of it um, and you'll see why I'm using this very simple non subdivided view in a moment to illustrate this so what I've done is I'm here in the model tab of Moto and I've got my eyelid item selected and over here under lists for morph maps I've already created a morph called closed and when I select that uh, I can see what's happening when this eyelid closes so all I've done is just pulled these vertices around uh, to cover the front of the eyeball the way I would want for example if I was doing uh, a blink so we're, the reason we're seeing it this way is when we're in the model tab by default deformers are not active so I'm going to go ahead and hit the O key and you'll see here under drawing and control we do not have uh, deformers enabled by default in the modeling tab and what that means is we're only going to see the effect of the morph that we've sculpted as it's selected here in the lists so if I hold control and click it it's deselected or I can select it and show it closed so let's go over to a different tab here like setup where in fact uh, by default in setup we do have deformers enabled and this would be normally what you would have in the animate tab for example in Moto so I have to turn this morph into something that Moto understands for deformation so all I do is just right click on the morph and say add a morph influence and then I can rename it up here I'll call it morph influence closed this is probably very familiar things I'm sorry if this is something that uh, is known already but this adds a deformer we can see it here in the deformer modus deformer evaluation stack so now the morph is getting evaluated as a deformation and if I come into the channels for this morph I can see that it already has a strength being applied of 100% which is why we're seeing it uh, closed if I set this to zero now the eye has got no uh, influence from the closed morph and the eyelid is opened again so I'm just going to create a very simple little rigging setup here so I'm going to add a locator and we'll call this locator um, blink control and I'll just move this locator off to the side a little bit uh, make it a little bit smaller we're not going to get too fancy here and I'm going to create a user channel for it so the only reason I'm really creating this locator is just to have the user channel sit on the locator so when I go to properties under user channels I can say add a user channel and we'll call this blink I'll make it a percentage with a minimum value of 0 maximum value of 100 okay and the last thing I'm going to do is come over here to assembly and set the command to perform a channel haul when so this is going to activate channel haul when I click on this item so when I click on the item it pops up the channel haul for the blink which goes from 0 to 100 right now it doesn't do anything so what we want to do is drag our blink control down here into the schematic um, and we can see the user channel ready to go the next thing I want to do is uh, for the morph influence def deformer I want to take its 
strength value and channel and drag that into the schematic and we'll rig up the blink to the strength. Now when we activate this we can see what happens as this blink uh, deformation occurs. But you'll notice we've got a big problem. So uh, even though if this was three-dimensional I would have sculpted it so that the blink looks correct in the morph when the eye is closed but while the blink is happening you can see it's cutting through the eyeball so as we're blinking here this would look really bad I mean our blink would be sinking into the geometry of the eyeball uh, and that is because morphs uh, interpolate between them linearly this means that the point each point so this vertex is going to go in a straight line from this to the next morph position. So if we watch this vertex, let's select this guy here, uh, that vertex. So let's watch what happens with him as we go to the closed position. So the closed position is down here. And if we drew a straight line pretty much up, that would be a linear interpolation to its starting position. See it moving up to the start. So it's moving in a straight line from one position to another. And that's how morphs work. They always work so that the vertex uh, travels from one position to the next in a straight line. But this is a problem if we want something like a blink that should follow more of an arcing motion uh, around, the, to, around the outside of the eyeball. So a really simple hack to fix this is to add a second morph. So I'm going to come back here to the uh, eyelid item and go back to the model tab. And I'm going to deselect our close morph and I'm going to create a new morph. And we'll call this one out. Now what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to grab these vertices, the ones that travel around the outside. Uh, I'm going to use a linear fall off just because I know that this point, as this blink happens, this point um, is not going to need to be pulled out as far as this point that travels around. So um, I'm now just going to activate a move and I'm going to move these out. And because of the fall off, the ones out here are moving more than here. In some cases, you might want to actually move, depending on how your geometry is constructed, instead of just out, you might want to actually move up on a 45 degree angle. Um, so I'll show you that in, in another model uh, coming up. But in this case, just pulling it out will work, will work fine. So I'll drop that tool, and now we have the out morph and the close morph. So we've got two morphs going on now. Of course, for this out, uh, morph, I now need to create another deformer. So let's right click on it, say add a morph influence. We'll rename this morph influence out. We'll go back to setup. And for morph influence out under its channels, we'll select its strength and drag that over into the schematic. Now, what would happen if we just wired up the blink to also drive the strength of out? Let's watch and see. As we blink, that doesn't look right, does it? It just pulls. It does go out as we go towards 100%, but it, it keeps pulling out. It's not following an arc. So how do we get around this? Well, very simply, we use a relationship modifier. So under add, we can go to relationship modifier. And now we're going to rig the blink control into the input of the relationship modifier and the output of the relationship modifier to the strength. Now the neat thing with a relationship modifier um, is that you get this little control panel when you activate it. And what this is doing is it's defining a relationship between the blinks value and the strength that will be activated at that point. So let's go ahead and say we go to a blink of, let's go a quarter of the way, so 25%. So at 25% blinked, uh, right now there's no strength being applied on the on the out morph so we want some of that applied let's guess about 25 percent maybe uh, yeah it's starting to cover the eyeball i need more so let's go 35 percent maybe whoa that was that was a mistake 
35%. Ah, that's looking pretty good. So this would be covering the eye. So I'm gonna hit this yellow box to key that. So I've created a key. Now I can come down here to uh, 50%. So at 50%, we're starting to cut a little bit through the edge here. So I need a bit more strength. Let's go to 45%, try that. Yep, that looks good. Create a key, come out here to, let's say 75%. Uh, now we've got too much strength happening here. So let's scale it back to what, maybe 30. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And key that. And then at 100%, I don't want any out. I want my final position of the original morph. So key that. So we've got 100%, 75%, 50% keyed, 25% zero. Let's go ahead and scrub this and see what happens. So it's moving out. We're covering the eye, covering the eye. And it's sweeping back in. And we're looking pretty good. If we had any problem along here, like maybe there we're getting too close to the eye. Uh, so maybe at the 25%, we want to actually increase this a little bit. Let's go to 38%, for example. Key that, scrub back and try. Yeah, it's covering a little better. But we have another problem here that's creating some of this issue. If we click on graph, we'll see that what we have is an ease in. So that's part of the reason why the out strength is not being applied evenly uh, because we have this ease in and ease out. So I actually don't want that. What I want is I want a constant so that now we're going to apply this value um, without the ease in, ease out. And let's look at the difference in the result. Right. So now it holds steady through the whole path. And interestingly, if you look at this, what have we got in the graph? Pretty much a curve. So this curve represents how much we are pulling out um, and on the on the vertices um, over time. So as we're out here in the middle, it's pulling out the strongest and then less and less as we go down. So combined with the linear action of the closed, we've now simulated uh, basically um, a curved path for the blink. So now we've got our blink that's following that little little kind of arcing arcing path. Now obviously uh, this is not subdivided so in um, with a real model you would be using something that's smoothly subdivided. So even for this example you'd be using something like this that's that's much smoother. But I'm gonna go ahead now and load up a scene with uh, one of the characters and I'll show you how the morphs are set up for it. Okay, so here I've loaded a scene with one of my characters uh, that was again created back in the 601 era that illustrates this technique in practice. So um, if I'm looking at the, the left eye here, for example, uh, we can see there's a series of morphs, but one of them will be eye close left. So in order to get this morph, all I've done is gone in and, and wrangled the points in Modo uh, using the transform tools, but also a little bit of the sculpt tools to be able to get a bit of the uh, pinching that I want um, at the corners of the eye and just get it sculpted to the, to the way I want till I got a closed morph that I was happy with. But in addition to that, of course, we also have a second morph, which is the out morph. And if we look at it here, you can see it just pulling those vertices out away from the eye for both the upper and lower lid. So there's the out and there's the closed. And when combined, let's go over to one of the tabs that we have deformers enabled. So over here, um, if I look at the blinking, now we can see the effect of combining those two morphs blended using a relationship modifier, just like we showed earlier in the simplified side view example. That's exactly what's happening here. So that that's why as we close, otherwise if I didn't have the out morph at this point, uh, the geometry would be slicing through that eyeball. And instead it's moving out in a roughly arcing kind of way following the eye, which I can fine tune using that relationship modifier. Now I know some people will probably be asking at this point, hey, 
why are you showing us this knuckle dragging technique using morphs instead of some sort of sexy technique like order of operation facial rigging? And for anyone interested in that, I strongly recommend Brian Tyndall, aka Hippie Drones, book The Art of Moving Points, uh, which is an absolute gift to the community from a legendary artist who has um, done the modeling and facial articulation uh, for some of the major and uh, iconic Pixar characters. And this book really describes a system which comprises both how you construct the topology as well as the consideration of how that topology is going to move and be articulated. So uh, it's really to get the most out of an order of operation type of approach using modus deformers, you really have to have this foundation and your topology should be uh, properly constructed to be able to support that kind of articulation. And this book really holds the key to that understanding. Now, for anyone interested in that, I also recommend checking out the Trollbridge project. So if you go to the Moto uh, community, right now there's actually a topic for the Trollbridge project. And uh, this is as of the recording of this video, which is August 2014. They're, the project is seeking animators to volunteer and work on this film, which is uh, being made uh, based on Terry Pratchett's Trollbridge story. It's a really high quality production. And uh, Christian Block has created this character, Micah, uh, which is a very cool character. And he's created a order of operation facial rig following uh, Brian Tyndall's techniques from The Art of Moving Points. And if you're interested in seeing how such a facial rig would work in practice, this is a great way to check it out, but it's also a great opportunity to get involved in doing some animation on a really cool project and working with uh, a full production type of rig in, in Moto. So all that said, uh, why would you ever use morphs instead of an order of operation approach? Well. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that if you have a character with non-ideal topology, um, and that could be because you were given a model, uh, perhaps the model was created from scan data, uh, maybe it's a game type low poly model that may not be really suited to uh, an order of operation deformation approach. Whatever the reason, uh, certainly when I created this model, I wasn't looking at um, order of operation approach. I hadn't read Brian's book yet. If I was redoing this character today, I probably would use an order of operation facial rig uh, because it provides more flexibility uh, in it than a morph based approach. And certainly my topology is not uh, ideally suited for that type of approach. So uh, the morphs is pretty much the way, the way to go for this character. The other thing about morphs is that they're very fast uh, to set up. And using things like Moto sculpting tools, you can create a, a lot of expressions really, really rapidly, a library of facial expressions. And it's really simple to rig. So if you were in an instance where, for example, you were doing a very specific shot for, say, a commercial, where you know exactly the performance that that character has to do, obviously through the years, people have done some great performances with just using morphs. Um, so it is possible, but especially I think if you know going in what you need that character specifically to do, then using morphs could be a fast way of achieving that uh, without the time that it may take to rig up a full order of operation rig. That said, a full order of operation rig uh, will be a lot more flexible in a production, especially a longer term production, but it's significantly more complex to rig. And you also really need to set up your topology right from the start to work correctly with that. So that would be um, my thoughts on facial rigging in Moto. Perhaps in future I'll take a look at doing a video showing some order of operation type of facial rigging and how the eye blink would be done instead with an order of operation instead. That's a topic that uh, we won't cover today but hopefully this will be uh, of use for those of you who want to just use uh, morphs for whatever reason, for doing your characters in Moto. So thanks for watching.